So, our relationship with, between animals and sport has never really been one that we should engender any form of national pride. Bear baiting was all the range throughout the 15th, 16th into the 17th century. It was a favourite sport of Henry VIII, favourite sport of Elizabeth I, who had bear pits and cockpits built all over London. Henry VIII even had one built in Whitehall. Now, bear baiting as a sport is very simple and straightforward. You stake a bear to the ground and it is set upon by a pack of angry dogs. The winning dog being the one that manages to sink its teeth into the bear and retain a hold. Contrary to popular belief, the death of the bear at the paws or jaws of the dog is not actually required. Because we're not barbarians. To give the dogs a fighting chance, the bear would have been pre-prepared. Its teeth and its claws would have been removed. Now, I need to bear in mind that we come to this at a time before anaesthetics and before tranquilizers. Who the hell removes the teeth of a bear? That job never made it onto worse jobs in history. So, in the years just prior to Queen Victoria's reign, the 1835 Cruelty to Animals Act effectively saw the end of cockfighting, bear baiting, monkey fighting, and a whole range of animal versus animal battle royales. But one animal was noticeably exempted from the act. Rats. And rat baiting starts out less of a sport and more of a way of terrier breeders being able to gauge the ratting potential of their new puppies. But when there are rich Georgians, alcohol, violence and gambling to be done, there is a lot of money to be made in organised pesticide. How rat baiting works is that you get a, uh, an angry terrier uh, and then also a sack of rats, usually one rat per pound of the dog's weight. Uh, the rats are entered into arena with the dog and the, dog, the time that the dog takes then to kill all of the rats is noted. Same procedure is then followed again with a similar dog of a similar weight and bets can be won or lost, fortunes can be made on which dog was quickest, betting on the actual time of the rats to uh, all re meet their maker and if a rat is thrown out of the arena and so forth. As with any sport, it soon developed its celebrities and the first was Billy the Raticide. Billy was a bull terrier and he was a record breaker. An October 1822 edition of the Sporting Magazine lays out Billy's prowess at the Westminster cockpit. It reads, The dog, Billy, of rat-killing notoriety again on the evening of the 13th exhibited his surprising dexterity. He was wagered to kill 100 rats within 12 minutes, but 6 minutes and 25 seconds only had elapsed when every rat lay stretched upon the gory plain without the least symptom of life appearing. Billy had a new world record. And it was a record he would break some five months later when he killed 100 rats in an astonishing five minutes, 30 seconds on April the 22nd, 1823. And he would hold that record for nearly 40 years, well after he had passed from this earth. So the last recorded rat baiting contest takes place in 1912, as in the 1880s, the RSPCA managed to convince a set of magistrates that rat baiting was in fact as cruel to the dogs as it was to the rats, and that ended it. With no more rat baiting on the horizon, terrier owners found a new hobby, and they stopped testing their terriers and started exhibiting them instead. And that led us to the crufts that we know today. Well, anything that Britain can do, of course, Europe can one up us on. So, from the court of Johann Georg I, Elector of Saxony in modern day Germany, we bring you fox tossing. Yes, fox tossing. It's all the rage if you want to distract yourself from the Thirty Years' War. Johann was well known for filling his royal courtyards with all manner of animal combat. Bears, wolves, oxen, stags, you name it, it has fought a no holds barred death match in a Dresden Market Square. It's played in couples, both men and women can play. How progressive. Many couples would gather in a closed arena. Players would stand 20 feet apart with a long strip of fabric between them. This was known as a preltoch or bouncing cloth. Then the foxes are released in a chaotic frenzy and when a cro fox crosses over your bouncing cloth, you pull, launching the fox skyward and points can be awarded both for height and for stylish flailing. 
Some foxes got as high as 25 feet and entertain spectators with the frantic efforts to right itself and land on its feet, which of course it never did as it plummeted towards the ground. Arenas were covered with sawdust because thoughtfully, a fox that died on impact with the ground just couldn't be tossed again. How thoughtful's that? Leopold I of Austria opened the Vienna season with a grand fox tossing tournament in the Prater, a large park in central Vienna similar to our Hyde Park. During these festivities the king himself could be gleefully seen throwing sticks at recently tossed foxes. A Swedish diplomat commented, it was a little far from the gravitas a Kaiser should have. He might have a point. The death toll for these festivities could be almost apocalyptic. The butcher's bill for one tournament held in Dresden totaled 687 foxes, 533 hares, 34 badgers and 21 wildcats. The host, Emperor Augustus II, complained afterwards that the wildcats were wholly unsuitable as they sank their claws into the bouncing cloth and it was nearly impossible to give them a pleasing toss. What a guy. If that wasn't enough, he closed the ceremony by releasing 34 wild boars and three wolves into the crowd, which caused much entanglement in the hoot skirts. I'll confess, I've hosted some niche events, but I've never felt the need to set wolves onto my guests. If you think that's as bizarre as it gets, then you'd be quite wrong. The Court of Brunswick held a competition that was done in fancy dress. The men dressed as heroes of Greek legend and fierce hobgoblins, while the ladies dressed as Greek goddesses and nymphs. But not to have them left out, they even went as far as dressing the foxes with tinsel masks and gaudy cloth, sometimes even dressing them as unpopular politicians. Fox tossing is a horrific sport that thankfully has died out with the electors of Saxony. But if there's one small, small silver lining, it's that frequently players would be quite severely injured by frantic foxes trying to defend themselves. And to that we say, good. Have a good day.